well rested and ready to go. It's so good to see everybody. I am in a good mood. Last Saturday was uh, the Creative Arts Emmys in Los Angeles, California, where Corrections was nominated. You guys want to see an Emmy? Do you? Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'll give you the name of a couple of late night hosts who have plenty at their house. Uh, me and Shoemaker went, and uh, suffice it to say, Mikey the Shoe don't like L.A. <laughs> he lands in a bad mood, complains the whole time, <laughs> says stuff like, if I want a green juice, I'll drink it from a jar of Clausen's. So it's like I, it starts bad and it just gets worse because we, Donna from Wardrobe, we decided sort of last minute to go and you know we were off all month and our, our tuxes were here. And so we, we wrote Donna from Wardrobe very kindly, put together a box, a garment a, a box and sent it to us at our hotel. So anyway, I'm getting ready uh, for the Emmys and uh, Mikey the Shoe calls up and he goes, I think she sent two of your shirts. He goes, uh, my, how'd you say it? Mine don't fit so good. <laughs> so he, he comes up to my room, and I, like, I, based on the fit, I don't think it was one of my shirts. It was maybe one of Frisbee's shirts. <laughs> it was not even close. And he's going, like, maybe I'll wear it backwards like a smock. I'm like, what? Um, so he goes, I got one. Though, don't worry, I got one in my room, uh, but it's blue. So uh, we go to the Emmys, and Mikey the Shoe's in a tuxedo with just a blue shirt, which he keeps saying is Bronx formal. <laughs> if it's good enough for Danny Aiello. <laughs> anyway, look, I know they voted ahead of time, and it had been decided that we had not won when we showed up, but I think if they'd seen Mikey the Shoe in his blue shirt, if we were the winner, they would have just crossed it off. <laughs> um, Eminem was a big winner that night. The Super Bowl halftime show, deservedly, was fantastic. Uh, won an Emmy. And uh, we mentioned that in a monologue this week that with the, the uh, Emmy that Eminem won, he now only needs a Tony uh, for the EGOT. We joked that you should keep an eye out for him in Dear Evan Hansen. Now, more than one Broadway aficionado amongst you pointed out that show is no longer Tony eligible. So in order for Eminem to win a Tony for that show, he would either have to be in a revival or bear with me, a new show called Dear Evan, comma, Stanson. <laughs> Here's the idea. It's an alternate take on the Stan saga where uh, Stan dies, uh, but his girlfriend uh, lives and then has the baby, and she names the baby Evan, and it's a story about Eminem uh, befriending a young Evan because he feels bad that he never wrote back his now dead dad. I don't have time to write this. <laughs> That's an idea for whoever wants it. I am so behind the eight ball in Cicada Cicada right now. <laughs> it's going way too slowly, and I'm racing against the clock because uh, if the Mets win the World Series this year, I'm because <laughs> that is my whole third act. <laughs> and if you're surprised that it's a three act play, it's actually four. <laughs> but the fourth act is just a Q and A. <laughs> With pre-vetted questions. <laughs> uh, we also uh, mentioned a news story about uh, images of the Titanic, the, the highest resolution photos ever uh, were taken of the Titanic wreckage. And we said, but now the bad news, no survivors, and you guys, a bunch of you said there were, of course, survivors uh, from the Titanic. We knew that. Our joke was uh, based on the fact that you'd go down there now and find a survivor. Which brings up an interesting ethical question. If you did find one, <laughs> let's say a 110-year-old person who somehow, I don't know, uh, there's an air pocket in the galley, <laughs> boat kitchen, and 
or maybe the salt water has helped preserve them, but they're, you know, robust, happy. I don't know, 110 year old person. Do you bring them up? Or at this point, would it just be too jarring? I don't know. Uh, speaking of the ocean, no, oh, son of a gun, I, we'll save that one. <laughs> Shoemaker, next week during corrections, just yell out, speaking of the ocean. <laughs> uh, I quoted a, a, a Bob a Dylan lyric in our last correction as uh, his famous song, It's Not Me, Lady. A bunch of you, the ones who recognize jokes the best, said the line is actually, it ain't me, babe. Go away from the window. Hear your own trouble speak. I'm not the one you want, babe. I'm not the one you want to speak here. You say you're looking for someone who's never been familiar with Toronto. Smart you and protect you. Whether you're right or wrong. Someone knows me, yeah. It's not me, lady. No, I was right. That, of course, is a great song off the classic. Um, Bob Dylan, but this time from the left. <laughs> I said Rudy married his second cousin, but then I referenced the daughter of his first cousin. The daughter of his first cousin would be his first cousin once removed. A lot of you were very, very passionate about that correction in a way that makes me think it's something you've angrily yelled at a skeptical justice of the peace. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's legal. Uh, second cousins is when your parents are first cousins. Second cousins once removed is when you marry your second cousin and then divorce them. <laughs> you guys, we make a lot of fun of Rudy for the old uh, cousin mix-up. But you know who married his first cousin? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, this was courtesy of you guys, Albert Einstein's second wife was his first cousin. Their mothers were sisters and their fathers were cousins which means they were both first and second cousins. They never had kids. Thank God. <laughs> Don't need to be a physicist to know that would have been a bad idea. Uh, we had a month off, uh, a little bit too much time to have off. I gotta be honest, very happy to be back this week. I think we're all uh, very happy. It was nice to uh, catch up on stuff. Um, uh, shows, movies, books. There was that, um, uh, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Super succinct title, classic Tolkien style. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Um, uh, I haven't seen it. I guess it's on Amazon, but I couldn't watch it uh, because I'm a 48-year-old man. Mugs! So uh, last time we were here, I said the mugs were available online, and guys, you backed me up. You backed, the mugs were a hit. The mugs on the first day sold out, I think, uh, both due to your enthusiasm and maybe uh, the doubtful nature of those in the NBC store who ordered the first set of mugs. Um, <laughs> but this is true, it really did, all jokes aside, it went great. Uh, these are, it was, it is the best-selling uh, mug uh, on the NBC uh, uh, dot com store ever. That's just a, that's a true thing. Um, the worst selling is a Chicago mug. <laughs> and I guess they don't even sell uh, the, to catch a predator mug. Yeah, it's kind of, this part I like. It says, why don't you have a seat over there? <laughs> and this, but I'm worried, because I guess this one's available soon with a, a Keith Morrison drinking a mug with a picture of Keith Morrison drinking mug. <laughs> Guys, these are uh, the data on the mugs. We're really excited. It's sold. Um, 1,369 units. Now you might be thinking, oh, is a unit just one mug? You're right, yes. So <laughs> that's 1,369 mugs, but that does not count uh, the physical store. The physical store has sold 59, so I should have put that one first. That's not a big number. Uh, only 17 complaints about the mugs. Some of you have uh, posted photos on Twitter 
of a, a, a very kind of you. You've opened up your mugs and they're just shattered. It does seem like they're in a million pieces. I don't know, I don't know how that happened. I do, uh, we do want to replace those mugs. So just, if you could just send a photo of that, we do obviously need to know it's you. So just send a photo of that mug uh, with your driver's license and your social security number. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Some of you asked, are the mugs uh, dishwasher and microwave safe? They are. Thank you for asking. We did a lot of testing to make sure. That was the, that was the hold up. That's why it took a year, is we wanted to make sure. The, whole, the first, the beta test, a lot of them were either dish, they were one or the other. And you could wash it in the dishwasher and everything was fine, but if you uh, might put it in the microwave, just f loss of life. So we lost some good people, a lot of good people, but you can put it wherever you want except a box surrounded by bubble wrap. Um, oh, so I mentioned the Emmys and uh, I, uh, look, we didn't win, but had we? I didn't take it seriously. I never want to be one of those people who, you win an award, doesn't know what he's going to say. And I had some things to say uh, about uh, the jackals in my speech. And uh, I mentioned that uh, to one of our writers, Seth Reese, who said, you should read that speech in the next corrections. Which is funny, because uh, that's what I was gonna do. And now I can't. <laughs> because now if I do, it's also his idea. <laughs> and I'll, next time I'll see him, be like, eh, pretty good. <laughs> this isn't for you. Get your hands off it. This is mine. <laughs> you don't see me trying to jump on to, um... What is he? <laughs> Actathlon? <laughs> 2017's Actathlon? <laughs> now, in Reese's defense, and I want to be sincere for a moment. He has been very busy. He wrote a major motion picture. It's got a trailer and everything. The trailer looks fantastic. It's called The Menu. Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, Hong Chow, and Janet Petir. Trailer's fantastic. It is premiering this weekend at TIFF, the Toronto um, International Film Festival. And we are so genuinely so proud of him. He's a great writer. And uh, it never stops being cool when people who work here go on and succeed somewhere else. He, I should note, he co-wrote it um, with Will Tracy, who I haven't met, but who I assume has the patience of Job. <laughs> Will uh, writes uh, for Succession and used to write for Last Week Tonight. So um, head on over to his place if you want to see one of those Emmys. <laughs> Um, Reese is very excited. And he said, it was cool, he left, he went down, he, he was on set, he said he got to be really good friends with the cast. Although I have my doubts, because he keeps saying Ralph Fiennes. <laughs> so in the end, Reese did give me an idea for corrections, just wasn't the one he wanted. <laughs> Uh, but here's to uh, the premiere, uh, the TIFF premiere of The Menu. We're so excited to see it. Here's to being back uh, with everyone uh, who watches this. Uh, uh, cheers to everyone who's got their jackal mug. And uh, let's have a wonderful fall together. Uh, you will see me next week.